Uh, so all the haters, all the doubters, I am a real person. Can you confirm that for me, David? <laughs> Bankless Nation, happy third week of May. It's not just the third week of May. This is the best week of May. David, what time is it, man? <laughs> it's the Friday Bankless Weekly Roll-Up, Ryan, and it feels a little different for some reason this week. Why, yeah. What's going on? Why is this different? Well, all of the uh, rumors of me being a deep fake have dissipated suddenly because we now have proof of existence. <laughs> uh, so all the haters, all the doubters, I am a real person. Can you confirm that for me, David? Yeah, no, it actually, he does have matter. He does have physical <laughs> matter. I can actually feel his face. There's no battery in the back of the head, I promise, guys. <laughs> but look, man, it's been so much fun. This is the first roll-up David and I have ever done in person. And uh, we met for the first time on Monday. There's a lot of firsts going on this week. This is like a crypto story because people are blown away. In fact, like I think 50% of the people we talk to don't actually believe that this is the right. first time we met. They, right. they thought this was a sort of a PR event because we've done... God, how many episodes have we done of Bankless before meeting? Uh, like over three, somewhere in the three to four hundred range. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. But hours, uh, hours and hours and hours. And I feel like I, I like I feel like I've known you already, uh -huh. and uh, it was just this this funny thing we didn't meet in COVID, and now it's an opportunity to meet, and we sort of delayed it, made mm -hmm. a meme out of it, yeah. but uh, it was really cool. <laughs> Kept so, the ball rolling. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, guys, stay tuned to the end, and there's actually I think some footage of us actually meeting for the first time. It's just it's just kind of fun. And uh, this was permissionless, David. So mm -hmm. if people aren't familiar with permissionless, what's this conference? What are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, this is permissionless week. And now permissionless has broken my brain about how a conference can go down. It's a very, very crypto frontier, uh, but also very, very conferency. Uh, and so uh, the, the Blockworks absolutely killed it with it with the curation and the uh, and the back end. Uh, I think we killed it with some of the content and some oh, of the definitely. talks. Definitely. Uh, this has been like it's a first year conference and it's insane for a first year conference to go so well. So already looking forward to permissionless 2023. Let me just tell you, like uh, for a first your conference permissionless doesn't deserve to be this good like it's like <laughs> it like shouldn't be allowed and it's uh well look it's the best crypto conference i've ever been to david <laughs> that's really saying something ryan <laughs> um and but we got so much to cover for you and, and i think part of this episode is to update you mm -hmm. on all of the announcements that happened at permissionless because it seems like permissionless has become a shelling point for announcements so number one we got the birth of web3 social Okay, the Lens Protocol release, David was on stage with a live demo. He created his first Lens wallet, which is like a decentralized identity protocol, social media, and I'm calling it, man. I saw it this week. It's the first time I've actually gotten super bullish on Web3 Social, so we're talking about that. What else are we covering, David? Oh gosh, there were so many wallet announcements, one out of Robinhood. Robinhood getting into the self-custodial wallet game. We actually had a podcast recording with Vlad, the CEO from Robinhood, all about those details. Uh, that episode came out earlier this week, uh, but we'll also talk about some of those details as well. Coinbase had a secret announcement, which they revealed on stage here at Permissionless. Uh, Lido competition coming for out of Coinbase and a partnership with other people in the staking community. Uh, what else is there? Uh, you know, there's not just the Robinhood wallet. Coinbase actually announced a really cool wallet that I want to tell you about. Someone demoed okay. this to me yesterday, and, and so did Ledger. So this is also Wallet Week, mm -hmm. in addition to it being the birth of Web3 Social Media Week. So guys, we are going to take you through this. Of course, David, we do the weekly roll-up every Friday. So if you want to catch this again, you got to make sure you like and subscribe, rate and review, okay? So if you're listening to the podcast, give us a review, five stars, help us jack up to the top of the charts and also if you are looking on youtube make sure you hit that subscribe button send this to a friend because we're doing this every friday right mm -hmm. uh david tell them about alchemix before we get in some oh. people don't believe that this is a real thing mm -hmm. because it sounds too good to be true it sounds like a little like a, a Do Kwan Algo stable coin thing, but it's actually awesome. Tell them what this is. Yeah, especially when we are trying to avoid getting liquidations, but we're still trying to get DeFi capital and yield on our, our capital. Alchemix is a self repaying loan system. Uh, so what happens is you go to Alchemix, you deposit your DAI, you deposit your Ether, and then up to 50% of your deposited capital, you can borrow against that capital and you get your basically your future yield payments to you up front. Uh, and so, you, 
deposit 100 DAI, borrow 50 DAI while that 100 DAI goes and yield farms in DeFi and pays that 50 DAI loan back automatically. Uh, since it's fully collateralized, you can't get liquidated. You're not taking leverage. It is a self repaying loan technology, uh, something that is unique to the world of crypto. We, can't not, we cannot do this in TradFi. We can only do this on Crypto Rails. There is a link in the show notes to get started. Bankless.cc slash Alchemix, capital A at the start to get started. Uh, thank you, Alchemix for sponsoring this message. Dude, this is some bear market technology. You're gonna hit me right there. So uh, if you need cash, but you don't wanna sell your ETH, this is what you can go do. Self repaying loan on Alchemix, bring that yield forward and actually get some cash without selling. Cause like, why would you sell your ETH at these prices, right. dude? Yeah. Why would you sell pre-merge? Uh, so anyway, check that out guys. But let's talk market, David. What's happening with Bitcoin price? Uh, we actually had a green week, Ryan. What? <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah, uh, we started the week at 29,000. We are currently at 29,800 on Bitcoin. So above, uh, up almost 3% this week. So okay. uh, bloodbath last week, but new normal this week. Is hey, the pain over? Week. Uh, you done here? Let's not get that's not, not <laughs> let's our chickens not before they have. Let's not get carried away. Uh, this is uh, could also be the dead cat bounce week. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, those who have been throughout 2018, and we know that it's a bloodbath followed by uh, just a long, long steady of nothing, and sometimes another bloodbath follows. I don't know. That's what 2018 was. Who knows what this has in store for us this year, though? You know, it's funny. Is uh, a lot of the talks I've heard, I've heard the the bear word being mentioned, mm -hmm. right? It's like everyone assumes we're entering the bear market. Uh, do, you, do you believe that? Because I feel like there's so much bullish building news mm -hmm. in this podcast that we're going to cover. And yet at the same time, prices are down. And so there's this bear sentiment. Yeah, the, the bear market is definitely getting memed into existence at this point. So I think uh, the community is using the bear market word more yeah. and more and more. Uh, I'm doing it as well. So I guess that means bear market. Um, but I would, would say the bear market vibes at permissionless are totally absent. Uh, yes, we have a lot of permissionless talk to get to so we'll, we'll keep on hinting at it But like no one really feels like we're in a bear market uh, at least in only in the prices The only thing about the bear market is the prices and who cares? <laughs> Those are numbers on a screen If you're yeah, holding who cares? Who cares? Prices. I don't care about pricing right David. <laughs> no, we're, we're not here That's for the money cool. We're not here for the money uh, ETH price. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, ETH price started the week at 1950 uh, we're up like 1% up to uh, 1980 kind of flat on the week uh, okay. who knows what it'll be by the time this uh, podcast comes out Though. I'll take it. I'll take it. How about the ratio? That's been uh, down a little bit. Down a little bit on the ratio. We lost about one to two percent. Uh, not too much there. Uh, but it, in bear markets, ETH does go down versus BTC. It's been holding up up until last week, where it took a nosedive. Uh, but since then, we're kind of about at the same, more or less. Okay, so it's it's not telling us anything specific. Nope. We're just we're up, we're down, we're mm -hmm. a bit crabbing out. And uh, total crypto market cap, Are we still above a trillion. Uh, yeah, we're still above oh, a trillion. Okay. Uh, one point three. Three trillion it's basically flat on the week so total crypto value market cap no change there in seven days do you want to zoom out just take a quick look at uh, macro at what's going on here so uh, re read this tweet out for us uh, 35 trillion dollars in global market value erased since the beginning of the year that's 14 percent of all global wealth including the 1 billion that we lost in crypto uh, for reference 2008 was a 19 percent decline uh, so those are like comparable numbers that's kind of crazy actually 2008 felt so much worse right and we're like within the ballpark and right. maybe this goes to 19 percent that's only like five percent more uh, and this would be like a 2022 would be like a 2008 level event in market decline. It's incredible. Absolutely crazy. Uh, people that were sitting on cash in 2008, those people did well. Yeah, those people absolutely. did well. <laughs> um, guys, we have so much to cover. Uh, so much. We're going to talk about some events at Permissionless, some things that happened. Again, the birth of Web3 Social. David, what else are we talking about, man? Oh my God, there's so much. Uh, an insane number of wallet releases. We teased them at the beginning. Uh, like I said, a brand new liquid staking competitor. And at the end, we also have like a little photo gallery for people who are FOMOing about permissionless. Uh, we got you. Yeah. Actually, stick around to the end. We got some photos. Absolutely, guys. We're going to get to all of those things. But before we do, we want to thank the sponsors that made this episode possible. If you're trying to grow and preserve your crypto wealth, optimizing your taxes is just as lucrative as trying to find the next hidden gem. Alto IRA can help you invest in crypto in tax advantage ways to help you preserve your hard earned money. 
Alto Crypto IRA lets you invest in more than 150 coins and tokens with all the same tax advantages of an IRA. They make it easy to fund your alternative IRA or crypto IRA via your 401k or by contributing directly from your bank account. There is no setup or account fees and it's all you need to do to invest in crypto tax-free. Let me repeat that again. You can invest in crypto tax-free. Diversify like the pros and trade without tax headaches. Open an Alto Crypto IRA to invest in crypto tax-free. Just go to altoira.com slash bankless. That's A-L-T-O-I-R-A dot com slash bankless and start investing in crypto today. The era of proof of stake is upon us and Lido is bringing proof of stake to everyone. Lido is a decentralized staking protocol that allows users to stake their proof of stake assets using Lido's distributed network of nodes. Don't choose between staking your assets or using them as collateral in DeFi. With Lido, you can have both. Using Lido, you can stake any amount of your ETH to the Lido validating network and receive ST ETH in return. ST ETH can be traded, used as collateral for lending and borrowing, or leveraged on your favorite DeFi protocols. All this without giving up your ETH to centralized staking services or exchanges. Lido now supports Terra, Solana, Kusama, and Polygon staking. Whatever your preferred proof of stake asset is, Lido is here to take away the complexities of staking while enabling you to get liquidity on your stake. If you want to stake your ETH, Terra, Sol, or Matic and get liquidity on your stake, go to Lido.fi to get started. That's L-I-D-O.fi to get started. The Layer 2 era is upon us. Ethereum's Layer 2 ecosystem is growing every day and we need bridges to be fast and efficient in order to live a Layer 2 life. Across is the fastest, cheapest, and most secure cross-chain bridge. With Across, you don't have to worry about the long wait times or high fees to get your assets to the chain of your choice. Assets are bridged and available for use almost instantaneously. Across bridges are powered by UMA's optimistic oracle to securely transfer tokens from Layer 2 back to Ethereum. A token proposal is being deliberated as we speak in the Across forum where community members will decide Side on the token distribution. You can have your part of Across's story by joining the Discord and becoming a co-founder and helping to design the fair, fair launch of Across. If you want to bridge your assets quickly and securely, go to across.to to bridge your assets between Ethereum, Optimism, Arbitrum, or Boba networks. All right, guys, we are back. And just a reminder, you might hear some noise in the background. That's because we are recording at the permissionless conference, all right? And so a lot of the uh, news events and important things that are happening in crypto are being announced here on the floor at Permissionless. And the first is this. I just got done this morning from watching David on the main stage with Stani from Ave, but also the Lens Protocol. And I feel like I was in the audience and I feel like I just saw the birth of Web3 Social, okay? And just some history. Um, you know, we're talking about Web3 Social back in 2017. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this project called Peepeth. They tried to put Twitter for Ethereum, all Tweets transactions on, the blockchain. on chain. Like it sounded really cool. It's just like we were not ready for that. And so I've been somewhat bearish since then on Web3 Social. Like, no, first we got to do the money use cases in DeFi, and then we'll come after Twitter and Facebook. But no longer. Like I actually see things that are being built. Could you take us through what you demoed this morning with Stani? Yeah, if you are into Twitter, crypto Twitter, if you're addicted to crypto Twitter like me and Ryan, uh, this might be for you. Uh, it feels very much like Twitter. It feels a lot like a Facebook profile. Uh, and so I was actually given the chance to mint my own lens profile on stage. I now have trustlessstate.lens. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and if you, if you, uh, you can actually, if you are whitelisted, you can go and uh, mint your profile as well. This is on Polygon. Uh, and Lenster is a la app that is built on top of Lens. So Lens being the protocol, Lenster being the uh, the uh, social media platform on top of pro uh, the protocol. Uh, and it looks and feels a little bit like both like Facebook, a, a lot like Twitter. Uh, when you follow someone, you actually sign a message. You don't have to broadcast a transaction. The only thing that you actually make a transaction for is minting your profile. Uh, you, your profile is an NFT on Polygon. Uh, and then when you follow people, you sign verifiable message to say, I indeed follow this person. And that is how we build out social graphs. Uh, and so people are minting their lens profiles. If you signed that early message saying, hey, I should own this tweet. Uh, this happened a number of months ago. You have the whitelist capabilities to go and mint your profile. And so I set up my, my put my CryptoPunk as my profile picture. Uh, I followed Stani. I, I what is it called to do something on Lens? Tweeting out? What do you call tweeting on Lens? Uh, tweeting on Lens. And it's actually on Lensster. Are you talking mm -hmm. about specifically? Yeah. yeah. Um, we, need, we need a verb for that. Sonny needs to come up with a verb mm, for that. But yeah. I sent out a tweet, TBD for that future word. Okay. Uh, I sent out a tweet saying just setting up my Lens account as Jack Dorsey did when he set it up his Twitter account way back when. 
Uh, and yeah, so like Web3 Social is underway. Yeah, what's really cool, and here's the distinction that I think if, if, you, if you're not yet understanding the significance of this, because you might shrug it off and be like, oh, we already have Twitter. Uh, that, that's cool. But the significance of this is what we're talking about doing is we are building on top of a protocol, okay? So Lens is the protocol. It's decentralized. It's like self-sovereign identity. You own your own profile, okay? You, you guys recall, David and I were banned. Uh, Bankless YouTube was banned last week. And that's because the social media platforms, they control our profile. They control our followers. They control everyone who's subscribed to the pod. We don't have control over that, okay? But Lens is the base layer where the creator, where the individual has full self-sovereignty and control of their social media profile, all right? And the app that David is showing right now that you see on screen if you're on, on YouTube is just one app that was built on top of this thing. So we're not talking about a new Twitter platform that has launched. We're talking about underneath the Twitter platform, an entirely new protocol and multiple different interfaces. We could have many different versions of a Twitter or something even better than a Twitter launched on top of this. Mm -hmm. And also, Astani was talking about like the ability to change up the algorithms. Right. So a user being able to, maybe I wanna to subscribe to something that's not so, um, it's like ad centric. Maybe I want to subscribe to an algo that, that emphasizes public goods. Uh, talk about that a little bit, because that is a paradigm shift as well. Yeah, the idea is that you can have a drop down menu for your preferred algorithm. Maybe you woke up that mo some morning in a particular mood and you can select an algorithm to match your mood I'm for bullish. that day. I'm bullish today. Is yeah. there an algo for bullishness? <laughs> <laughs> Only feed me bullish content. Uh, that is something that could be built. And the thing is like, that can also be opened up to the developer community. Uh, and so what the algorithm is, is open source. Uh, and so algorithms are free to create and free to upload to your lens profile. Uh, that functionality is not yet live. Uh, but like, hey, maybe you're feeling particularly rageful one day and you just oh, want to be angry. I don't know why, but the thing is you have that power. Yeah. Um, and you, maybe you're euphoric. I want the euphoria uh, algorithm today. You know, you know what's crazy though? I do feel like that's the uh, the default algorithm of social rage. media. It's rage just only. like rage. Yeah. It's just like, um, and, and like, and that's partially why Twitter's gotten so toxic and society has gotten so po polarized. So I want an optimistic algorithm, right? Sure. That's not feeding me advertising. And uh, David, you and Stani closed with this, which I thought was, was super powerful, where you talked about, um, we are no longer living on Mark Zuckerberg's property, mm -hmm. okay? This is moving us from the era of feudalism where we had Web2 overlords controlling our property. We own no property in the social media world as individuals, okay? We are in freaking medieval times right now. Mm -hmm. And this completely changes that. Now we can be property owners of our own social media content. But seriously, Mark, do come on the podcast so we could talk more about <laughs> how you can incorporate this <laughs> protocol too. <laughs> Uh, I did a fantastic panel with uh, Christina Bellamitri from Lens Protocol, as well as Evan McMullen from Disco, who is one of the Disco is feeding data into Lens Protocol. Uh, so if you want more on this content, uh, I did a panel with them at uh, Permissionless. Uh, so tap in for that one. I can't wait because no one's going to notice this during the bear market season. This is the time amazing things get built. Mm -hmm. uh, David, let's talk a little bit more about Wallet Week. OK, so you teased this. The Robinhood wallet, self-custodial. Again, we had a podcast with uh, Vlad Tenev, who is the CEO, co-founder of Robinhood. And they are doing something I didn't expect they would ever do. Okay, this is sort of a, a fintech company. They, are, they, they haven't been all in, in crypto. We've actually criticized Robinhood in the past because it was the case prior to like late last year that you could only buy crypto within Robinhood and then Robinhood would custody it. They didn't even let you withdraw your ETH or your Bitcoin to your own private key. Not your keys, not your crypto, all right? So that is not a bankless path. And then they added the ability to withdraw and now they are doing something even bigger. Talk about this, David, what, what is Robinhood launching? Yeah, they released Robinhood 3. Uh, which is a, a, a self-custodial crypto wallet, multi-chain as well, uh, so that you can hold your own keys and it's under the Robinhood brand. So this is separate from the actual Robinhood app. This is a separate app. Uh, and it's gonna, they say it's gonna onboard people into layer twos. It's gonna have NFT functionality. Uh, they have swap features. And I asked, I asked Vlad like, yo, how do the swap features happen? Is that via 
the, the Robinhood Exchange or is that for your DeFi app? And he gave me the, uh, that's under wraps. Uh, but uh, he did leak, leak some, some, uh, some tidbits of information. Uh, so that podcast came out earlier this week. Uh, so if you want to stay, uh, get into and download it on all things Robinhood's Web3 app, uh, watch our podcast. Look, guys, this is part of our DeFi mullet thesis, as you know. And the thesis has always been fintech in the front, DeFi in the back. And that is what's happening. Now Robinhood is, is growing out their DeFi mullet. Look at this, this line, David. Easy access to DeFi protocols to earn yield within Robinhood's wallet. So that's kind of cool. Beautiful. Um, also, did you did you catch, catch this uh, last week? Um, oh, this is a picture, by the way, of us us recording at Permissionless. So setting, setting up, up to record, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but did you catch this? So what's mm -hmm. SBF up to? Yeah, SBF bought 7.6% of Robinhood. So huh. he is getting into the game. Uh, FTX also bought Blockfolio, and it was a great onboarding mechanism for them because uh, like Blockfolio was the, the app that I checked a bajillion times in 2018 to check crypto prices. Uh, now they're getting into Robinhood. Uh, the price of Hood, the equity of, uh, behind Robinhood, jumped 28%. Uh, that's roughly over $500 million of stake. Wow. Uh, and Right, yeah, uh, and, which is absolutely crazy. So SBF making moves. Yeah, making moves. the... Uh you know, the, the the mullet is also a good value proposition for pumping your stock price, apparently, <laughs> as well. Uh -huh. It looks good there, too. Um, hey, let's talk about the second wallet, because that is only one of um, three wallets that we wanted right. to talk about. And I actually, I think this is super cool. I saw a demo of this, David. Um, have, have, you, have you heard about this? Have no, you... you're going to have to download me, man. All right. So I think this is kind of cool, because it's something I have never seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to, I want to, Try to explain this and okay. ask me questions about it. And there's some things I'll probably get wrong, not understand yet, because this is kind of a new approach. But you know how we have, obviously, custodial wallets? Certainly. And Coinbase has a custodial wallet. And so if you're someone like my dad, I'm like, Dad, you know, it's okay. Just keep it on Coinbase. Figure right. out the private key stuff later, right? Like, um, but that is also not the bankless path, right. obviously. So we have custodial, and then we have non-custodial. Okay, and that is the bankless path where individuals taking their own private keys and it is their keys and it is their crypto, right? So we have this, sort of this divide. And of course, on the, uh, non the, the non-custodial side, we have like hardware wallets. Yep. We have MetaMask. We have smart contract wallets, which we haven't seen the, the renaissance of smart contract wallets yet. Okay, so, but there's this gap in the middle that I didn't notice until now. And that is a gap that Coinbase is trying to fill a semi-custodial wallet, okay? So like right in the center, custodial, non-custodial, semi-custodial. So what does that mean? It means basically this new Coinbase MPC wallet is going to be a, uh, an app. Right now it's available for Android. They're gonna release it on iPhone, but it splits your keys, your private keys. So the phone itself, you retain one copy, like a shard of your private keys. It's something called MPC technology, multi-party right. compute some cool cryptography behind this. And then Coinbase gets another part of your keys. Okay. Okay, so it's both of these keys together uh, are required to sign transactions. Let me read this out for you. The idea is pretty simple. The user keeps some key material on their device and Coinbase keeps some key material. Both are needed to use the wallet. If one party is hacked, funds are still safe. Okay. Okay, okay. you following so far? Yeah. All right, so you might ask, like, why? Like, what's the use case for this? Yeah, is this not just a two of two multi-sig? It's not, it's not quite a multi-sig, but it's got some uh, similarities. But the reason why is there's this space in the middle. Um, Coinbase support gets a lot of people on their, on their non- So they have a non-custodial wallet, too. Yeah. Coinbase recall. wallet, yeah. Coinbase wallet. And the biggest support request, can, can you guess what that is, David? Uh, can you give me my keys, please? Yeah. I lost my keys. Yeah, <laughs> I lost my keys. Uh, please support, help me restore yeah. my keys. Can right? I have my money back, please? Can I have my money back? I forgot my seed phrase, yeah. all of these things. And so this provides a way to um, for Coinbase to essentially socially kind of recover, not socially recover, but it uses Coinbase's security apparatus that's already, that's already trusted to right. So if a user loses their keys, then Coinbase can also restore that, all okay. right? And then the benefit is, if you are in the, the custodial side of things uh, completely, you don't have access to anything DeFi, right? right? right, right yeah. So this wallet provides you access. There's a, literally a browser in the wallet where you can go to Aave, you can go to Compound, you can connect and do all of the permissionless DeFi things okay. 
but you have a security blanket in yeah. that super easy to set up. It's abstract. The, the complexity is abstracted from the from the user. And like your dad's not going to lose his private keys this right. way. Right. And he could still use DeFi. So it's almost like uh, DeFi with training wheels. Right. And some people hear that and they're like, well, that's not maximally bankless. Right. What happens if Coinbase goes away? Uh -huh. That sort of thing. And that is the trade off. So if Coinbase goes away, you know, you're still kind of you're yeah, still kind yeah. of screwed. Uh -huh. um, and so there are some trade offs as well as like you, you have to dox yourself right. to Coinbase, right? They have your privacy. So this is really like they have it anyways. They ha right. So this is kind of like DeFi with with training wheels, and mm -hmm. I think is an interesting design space. Uh, and uh, I didn't even think that it was possible, but here it is. Right. Okay. So this feels like uh, so I use a, a password manager in my browser. Yeah. Uh, and that is encrypted on their end. Yes. Uh, so they host that in a database. Yes. Uh, but be, and but it can only be accessed when I type in my very specific password. Yes. What's your, what's your my, password, my, my, David? Uh, I'll sound it out loud. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and so that's how I get my password for all my password managers. It feels a little bit like that. Yeah. So like my my private key is stored in a in a um, centralized server. Right. It's encrypted and safe, and it can only be accessed by my device. Yes. Is that is that am I tracking here? Uh, that you you are tracking. Okay. And the cool thing about this, let me go back to what what they said. Um, if one party is hacked, funds are still safe. Funds are safe. Through. Okay. Amazing. That's that's the way MPC works. Cool. So that provides an additional layer right. of safety. So this is semi custodial. Again, right. it's just not for every. But we're trying to get more people into DeFi. And uh, you know, losing your private keys, uh -huh. the terror of that, right? Like, so when pe people ask me all the time, should I withdraw from Coinbase? I'm like, mm -hmm. not until you're ready, mm -hmm. right? Like, not until you're ready. And then they have to, they have to be ready. They have to get private key management before right. they start to use DeFi. This is a, a faster path. Uh -huh. It's like an interim step. It's your training wheels. And actually, like, I have a uh, a social recovery smart contract wallet that uh, is very like the most bankless wallet of all time. Right? They yeah. don't have your my private keys. Private keys don't exist because it's a smart contract wallet. Yeah. And there was so, a social recovery mechanism. If I lost my phone, yeah. uh, I would lose my wallet, and so I would go to my guardian, and he would restore my wallet. Problem is, he also lost his wallet. Oh. Uh, and so, and then I lost my wallet. And so there are there are uh, trade offs going into the opposite side of the spectrum. Even for a crypto native. Even for a crypto native, right. where I lost I lost my cri private keys, Ryan. Uh, you did. I, I had oh. an, I had an ENS in there, and it it was so hardened and it was so restrictive that like, yeah, sometimes the compromise is actually nice. Like yeah. I will even use that as a very bankless person. Have you tried emailing Coinbase support about that issue? Uh, I did not email Coinbase <laughs> support. Uh, I kicked myself in the butt. It's I, cool. Like yeah. I think this is cool. And again, if you want to be maximally self-sovereign and maximally bankless, there's still that option. Yeah. But this is a space in between for some people. Also, last thing on Wallet Week, it uh -huh. feels like at this conference, Ledger announced a browser extension, I think. Do you want yes. to talk about this? Uh, Ledger Connect, yeah, so we, we, this was uh, Charles from Ledger, uh, and they tweeted out, today we are taking a further step to announce Ledger Connect. Ledger Connect is a browser extension that makes it easy for you to connect your Ledger to Web3 directly from your browser. It's easy, smart, and safe, he tweets. Uh, it makes me think that they're just routing right around MetaMask and going uh, straight from Ledger to DeFi app. Interesting. Yeah, right, yeah. okay. This MetaMask does... really getting some competition lately. Uh, I'm, I'm glad for it. I think MetaMask is a fantastic team. They also gave a fantastic presentation mm -hmm. at Permissionless, but it's good to see some more right. options in the space for sure. Um, David, you want to talk about this too? Actually, lead with this for me because I'm not sure I fully mm -hmm. understand it. This is just uh, one of the many, many announcements that happen at Blockworks, but this one's big, Ryan. Uh, Coinbase, you can stake your ETH with Coinbase, but we all know the, the drawbacks of that. Centralized staking, we don't really want to put too much ETH on a centralized uh, database, especially with a centralized company. Uh, and Coinbase knows this. Uh, so they've partnered up with Figment and other people in the staking space to make a brand new liquid staking protocol. So this is now coming for Lido, Ryan. So oh, wow. this is not only is this like announcement at Permissionless Week, not only is this Wallet Week, but this is also healthy competition week going on. Yeah. Uh, so Coinbase Cloud, Figment, and a few other members have joined a brand new DAO to start up basically what is a Lido competitor, a Rocket Pool competitor uh, that is also decentralized. So this is using fantastic technology out of a Obal network as well with shared secret validators, uh, which has a new name, which I'm forgetting at the moment. Um, but yeah, brand new liquid staking DAO getting spun up by some really big players. That's good. Look, there's been some concern. I don't know if people are tracking it, but I, I do think it is a concern. Do you know how a few months ago we were mm -hmm. worried about uh, ETH2 client diversity? Mm -hmm. If you don't know what that means, 
we don't have time to right, get right. into it, but yeah. it was it was a, a, a vector, a, a kind of a moderate, like mild a centralization vector. And now that problem has been solved. So we have all sorts of different ETH clients. Now that the next problem for, I think, the, the Ethereum community to solve is Lido's been crushing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have attracted a lot of stake inside yep. of their protocol. Yep. And uh, we don't want any one single liquid staking protocol to kind of take over. Mm -hmm. And so this is an answer to that. My, my thought was always like, we got to bring competition into the space uh, and actually like, you know, try to try to diversify this a little bit. So that looks what they, it looks like that's what's going on here. And this is actually specifically geared towards institutions. So this name, the name of the protocol is Alluvial. I okay. actually didn't know that until just now. Uh. Um, but yeah, this is going after the institutions of the world. Uh, and so this is uh, but like allowing institutions to get into the liquid staking game. Uh, it looks like they are doing AML and KYC checks. Uh, just because that's what institutions need. Yeah. Uh, and so I think this is going to bring a lot of TVL, a lot more stake into ETH 2.0 staking. It's going to lock up a lot of ETH, Ryan. Yeah, dude, you know what? That reminds me, there is a panel we need to get to later this afternoon mm -hmm. after this. And this is moderated by Justin Drake. It's the institutional yes. case for Ether. Right. I'm super excited about that. Right. But this is another on-ramp for institutions to get in this space. Uh, dude, can you give us a quick Luna update? Oh God! It's still bad. Like it's we bad. don't have to dwell on this. It's we, bad. That was last week's news, but this week, what's happening? Just a few quick highlights. Uh, and, oh, gosh, a number of things. Uh, feels bad to be Doquan at the moment. Uh, he is formally getting charged, uh, and so there he has been called in for a parliamentary hearing in South Korea, where Doquan is on, uh, from on USC and Luna. Uh, and so TBD on what comes out of that. But uh, Doquan is going to have to go to, I think, their whatever court, I guess going to go to court yeah uh would not want to be in his seat it's uh yes there are some f financial uh south korean financial uh, you know regulators investigators really looking into into this into this mm -hmm. as well he was going to be speaking at the conference but of course uh tara tara pulled out understandably yeah. so and i don't uh, even think they formally pulled out i think everyone just kind of assumed yeah like, oh, i don't think do quad's coming yeah but in more exciting news ryan getting back onto the bullish and exciting side of things uh did you listen to chain smokers oh yeah dude really yeah like i i mean especially when they were huge like I, it's just yeah. good music to just chill to relax i don't know why i thought that was surprising i didn't really take, take you for a chain smokers person now, now that you've met me i'm like <laughs> i'm like a pretty cool guy ryan's actually I cooler than i thought guys yeah uh he listens to chain smokers chain smokers also cooler than i thought because they're doing nfts <laughs> surprise surprise uh so with the platform royal justin blau uh his royal platform we did a show on that if you guys want to dive into that uh allows you to tokenize your your uh songs and get your streaming royalties on of it on it so chain Smokers, you can buy a chain smoker song, Ryan, because it's an NFT on Royal. Uh, so that's that's a really big deal. Chain smokers are like probably top, probably in the top ten Dude, bands of uh, currently. Look, if the chain smokers came on the Bankless podcast, this mm -hmm. would make me like the coolest person alive to like my family, to like mm -hmm. my kids, to my friends. Yeah. So I think that needs to happen, man. I think we got to work on that. We're talking with the chain smokers manager. Oh my right god! Now. <laughs> oh my god! That'd be amazing. Uh, also, not just the chain smokers, but music platforms. Uh huh. Spotify. Yeah, Spotify also getting into NFTs. Uh, so like, uh, shout out to Cooper Turley for just memeing music NFTs into existence because oh, yeah. I guess it's working. Uh, so Spotify trialing music NFTs on its platform. Uh, I think we're gonna need some more details out of this, but uh, the uh, the quick take here is that selected U.S. based users were able to see some of the NFTs of artists on the platform. So we already saw Instagram doing an NFT uh, feature. They, there's literally NFT tabs on Instagram now. Yeah. Uh, and like Spotify, uh, there, there's videos and like lyrics and like uh, album artwork in Spotify. So they're really getting into the whole multimedia thing. Now they're doing NFTs. Guys, this is the story here, okay? This is the story of Web3. Use Web2 platforms for distribution. Mm -hmm. Use them to distribute. That's what their algos are good for. That's what they're optimized for. Use Web3 to build community and to own distribution versus ownership yep. so web 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 3 is not possible without web 2 the distribution right. like the mem the mimetic energy the ability to spread ideas and concepts and gather communities but web 2 is not where you, your platform is that's not where you own things mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, yeah this is this is another example of using spotify as a distribution tool right to get music NFTs out there. And uh, are, are you ready to say Cooper's right about music NFTs, dude? Because uh, you were a little skeptical. I'm still skeptical. <laughs> I'm still skeptical. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, 
there's plenty of reasons as to why music NFTs need to exist. And like th this might not, not even be music NFTs. It says that they will just link to some external NFTs. So it's really up to the NFT ecosystem to make NFTs because whatever NFTs are done by the artist go into the artist page. Right. So it's, I think it's form factor agnostic. Yeah. Uh, so either way, Spotify wins. Yeah. Um, but like leaning into like well, how we need Web2 uh, to, to do Web3 things. Like Web2 is where you flex and then Web3 is you, where you own what you flex. Ooh, uh, yeah. Nice and so, take. Right? Have yeah. You tweeted in, that yet? Uh, you're going to steal that one from me? Uh, no, 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 no. It's yours. It's yours. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I think now we can flex inside of Spotify too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God for that. Uh, Got to flex, flex on your friends. Product market fit right there. Uh, David, you know, one of the big questions or like one of the big, con the, the coolest part, one of the coolest parts about this conference has mm -hmm. been meeting all of the people who have gotten a job in mm -hmm. crypto as a result of listening to the Bankless podcast. And us berating you about <laughs> how, why you haven't quit your job it, yet. No one's angry that we tell you to do this. Everyone is thankful. Yeah. So we're gonna say it again, quit your corporate job. It's lame, it sucks, it's not where you wanna be. You're listening to Bankless because you know this already mm -hmm. and you gotta find a way to get into crypto, all right? I don't know how many success stories right. I've heard of people who've been able to do this. And sometimes it takes time. Right. You have to invest your hobby. Like you have to feel like figure out what opportunities uh -huh. are a good fit for you, but it can be done. And it like so many people are so mm. happy and mm. excited and um, just grateful for the opportunities provided for them on crypto. And so, yeah, what, what do you want to say about that, Dave? I've, I've berated enough. <laughs> Everyone has their own journey. Uh, and so whether or not a Web3 job is right for you can only be determined by you. Uh, but there was a man that we met and he uh, was joked about how like, oh yeah, every single week I just listen to Ryan and David tell me how I need to quit my job. <laughs> uh, and at some point I was like, you know what? Maybe I should quit my job. Uh, and so he did. He didn't even have a job to land into. He just started working in the DAO space. Uh, and he said, like, the, uh, he was not prepared for how well it was going to work for him. Uh, so I think there is a big net for you to fall into, into the Web3 world. Uh, and so here are some jobs that we're going to talk about. I think, actually, before we, we talk about some of these jobs that you can fall into, uh, Sometimes like people tell us like, oh yeah, I quit my job. I, I joined Web3 and then like, I think we've actually killed more jobs than we've created. Oh yeah, Bankless We've is killed total, a lot of jobs. We are a total job killer. But then we revive it on the other side, yeah. right? You mm -hmm. gotta, you gotta cross that chasm. But the amount of bankers even, uh -huh. we've, I, I've talked to so many people in TradFi who are like now, now in crypto, uh -huh. it's amazing. All right, I should read some of these out. I don't know. I don't know how to dance. I don't know how to dance. But like, you know. I'll, I'll just do it. this. I'll, I'll just read Okay, David's fist pumping. Business development lead at Goldfinch, a marketing oh, yeah. manager, Wanderverse Incorporated, VP of Engineering, ZKX, head of growth, ZKX, lead community manager, Crypto Skulls DAO, senior product designer, Parcel Incorporated. I could go on, but I don't need to because they're all for you, available for you on the Bankless Jobs page, bankless.pala.xyz mm -hmm. slash jobs. If none of those appeal to you, just submit your resume to the Talent Collective and plug in and- uh, Make Web3 the jobs companies. fight for you. Yeah, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll come for you. Play hard mm -hmm. to get a little bit, yeah. right? Uh, David. You ready to get into a few more things to finish out our new section with releases? A16Z's report. Yeah, so you were actually on uh, stage with Chris Dixon going through a few of these things, but A16Z released the 2022 State of Crypto report. Uh, A16Z actually puts a ton of money into research, and so you know they're going to come away with a lot of fantastic data. Uh, Ryan, since you're on the panel, what are the big takeaways that we should focus on? I think the big takeaway is uh, the state of crypto is strong. Mm -hmm. Like Dixon said, he's, oh, thank God. he's never seen, he's never never seen more interest from a talent perspective in the heart of Silicon Valley and in, in what's going on, right? So prices are down, but inflows are up. Mm -hmm. Product ideas are up. Talented founders uh, in the space are up. And, and don't forget, guys, price is a leading in, is a trailing indicator of talent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what people like Chris Dixon track are the amount, the energy, the talent, the human resources pouring into this space. Who cares about pricing? Right. Because right. pricing will just follow the talent that's building in this right. space. So uh, yeah, I've got a take on this a little bit later, but um, we're still strong. And the other thing that's in this report is we've been through these cycles in the past. Right. Like this is a fractal. We've seen this at least mm -hmm. three other times, maybe four. And this is, uh, ag again, what we're seeing is talent inflows while prices are going lower. 
there couldn't be more differences between the 2018 to 2020 bear market versus the one we're going into right now. First off, we are flushed with cash. Yeah. Like every single team just raised a bajillion dollars. Yeah. Uh, so there's a ton of money out there to pay people to work in crypto that like in stark contrast to 2018 where companies actually is like just closed up shop and left. Yes. Because we did not have any money. Yes. Uh, so there's a huge safety net for what's getting built. But do you remember like ICO treasuries just dissolved overnight? Right. Totally. Yeah. Dumping and dumping and dumping and just like, yeah, e e even like layoffs on layoffs on layoffs. That's just not happening right now. It's actually the inverse. People are hiring because everyone just raised insane valuations. Uh, so like the whole entire industry is shored up. Uh, and so we're going to onboard a ton of people. And you know what they're going to do with their brand new Web3 paychecks? Whoa. They're going to buy crypto. They're going to buy crypto. <laughs> you mean working in the industry is not like, yeah, that, that is the ultimate way to be bullish, right? Yeah, people that work in the industry, they don't go and buy the S&P 500, right? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I haven't bought stocks in a while, David. That's true. Although Coin's looking pretty attractive these days. That is true. That's um, the only one, yeah. You know, the, the last thing I'll say is a Polygon just, it feels like they're crushing it. One thing that's slipped below the radar, we haven't talked about because it's not super sexy, but uh, is enterprise blockchain stuff. Mm -hmm. Ernst and Young just unveiled a supply chain tracking service on Polygon Nightfall, which is another Polygon chain. Uh, and I think we'll be seeing more more of these enterprise use cases in the future. They're being built on in the background. This is like the dream of 2016, 2017 starting to be realized. Yeah, there, there was a lot of like critiques as like enterprise blockchain. And, and to me, for even for a while, uh, it's always been confusing to me as what the hell that is. But after talking to Paul Brody at the EY, who's an absolute genius, yes. uh, I will not fade Paul Brody in the slightest. He, he's a killer. Uh, and he knows exactly how to get blockchains into the world of uh, into a world of enterprise. Uh, so when I see him doing stuff at EY, uh, I know there's signal there. Yeah. Uh, last thing we'll say on this, A16Z, a $600 million gaming fund. Okay. I I'm, thought we were broke. Right? I thought this was a bear market. <laughs> yeah. How are you raising $6,000? Uh, $6, Six hundred million dollars. Did I say that right the first time? I don't know. Six hundred million dollars, and this is after Framework. Do you remember Vance, right. uh, Spencer, and Michael from Framework? They yeah, just he was raised just on the stage right now. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. a few hundred a billion uh, million as well. So, uh, David, what's coming up next, man? Oh my God, we got uh, our favorite new segment: questions from the nation. Uh, There's just one of them uh, this time. <laughs> but then also a super hot take from Vitalik Buterin Ooh. about taking fees from uh, ETH staking protocols. Uh, so we'll get to that in the coming up next. If you have not yet, if you didn't do it at the beginning of the show, I'm going to remind you again, please like and subscribe. Uh, it is how we get the Bankless Podcast to the front of the RSS, pay, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, also YouTube. Uh, and literally, the more people listen to Bankless, the more people end up buying crypto. So if you're feeling bear market broke, uh, those five stars make crypto number go up. So you got to do that. Wow. Yeah. Nice link, David. <laughs> Guys, uh, we'll be right back with a spicy take from Vitalik. But before we do, we want to thank the sponsors that made this episode possible. Aave is the leading decentralized liquidity protocol, and now Aave V3 is here. Aave V3 has powerful new features to enable you to get the most out of DeFi, including isolation mode, which allows for many more markets to be launched with more exotic collateral types, and also efficiency mode, which allows for higher loan-to-value ratios, and of course, portals, allowing users to port their Aave position across all of the networks that Aave operates on, like Polygon, Phantom, Avalanche, Arbitrum, Optimism, and Harmony. The beautiful thing about Aave is that it's completely completely open source, decentralized, and governed by its community, enabling a truly bankless future for us all. To get your first crypto collateralized loan, get started at Aave.com, that's A-A-V-E.com. And also check out the Aave Protocol Governance Forums to see what more than 100,000 DAO members are all robbing about at governance.ave.com. Living a bankless life requires taking control over your own private keys. And that's why so many in the Bankless Nation already have their Ledger hardware wallet. And brand new to the Ledger lineup of hardware wallets is the Ledger Nano S Plus, a huge upgrade to the world's most popular hardware wallet. With more memory and a larger screen, the Nano S Plus makes it easy to navigate and verify your transactions. And the paired Ledger Live desktop app gives you increased transparency as to what is about to happen with your NFT. What you see is what you sign. The Nano S Plus gives you the smoothest possible user experience while you're doing all of your crypto things. So go to the Ledger website to check out the features of the new Ledger Nano S Plus and join the waitlist to get yours. And don't forget about the Crypto Life card, also powered by Ledger. The CL card is a crypto debit card that hooks right into the Ledger Live app, right next to all the DeFi apps and services that you're already used to doing, like swapping tokens and staking. So if you don't have a Ledger hardware wallet, go to ledger.com, grab a Ledger, and take control over your crypto.
Arbitrum is an Ethereum Layer 2 scaling solution that's going to completely change how we use DeFi and NFTs. Over 300 projects have already deployed to Arbitrum, and the DeFi and NFT ecosystems are growing rapidly. Some of the coolest and newest NFT collections have chosen Arbitrum as their home, all the while DeFi protocols continue to see increased usage and liquidity. Using Arbitrum has never been easier, especially with the ability to deposit directly into Arbitrum through all the exchanges, including Binance, FTX, Huobi, and Crypto.com. Once inside, you'll notice Arbitrum increases Ethereum speed by orders of magnitude for a fraction of the cost of the average gas fee. If you're a developer who wants low gas fees and instant transactions for your users, visit arbitrum.io slash developer to start building your dApp on Arbitrum. If you're a DGen, many of your favorite dApps on Ethereum are already on Arbitrum with many moving over every day. Go to bridge.arbitrum.io now to start bridging over your ETH and other tokens in order to experience DeFi and NFTs in the way it was always meant to be. Fast, cheap, secure, and friction-free. All right, guys, we are back leading into questions from the nation. This is a weekly thing that we do every single roll up. I'm actually really enjoying them. Uh, the tweet out of Bankless HQ goes out every single Wednesday. So if you're on Twitter and you want Ryan or I to answer one of your questions, you got to go find that tweet. Uh, we try and uh, f uh, find the best question that we think is the most fun to ask. Uh, the number of likes on that question also helps as well. Uh, we only got one this week because we're also super busy. We've got to get back to permissionless stuff. Uh, question from tomato.eth. I guess I have to ask this to myself. Uh, what was it like to finally meet? meet the hologram in person hey <laughs> hey now the hologram the hologram deep fake okay yeah. not a hologram uh so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna uh i don't know what to do or how to call this maybe a, a slight docs but like ryan uses the filter on zoom <laughs> yes <laughs> and so when i see him in real life i'm like oh my god He's there's like high like, fidelity here <laughs> yeah it's just like why do you why do you, why do you have so many wrinkles you've ryan? got you've got whiskers right you, you are a dad <laughs> Uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. There's the uh, Finding Nemo meme of just like uh, the, the, when the uh, fish are in the water, but they're still in their plastic bag. They're like, all right, now what? Yeah. It was a little bit of that. Like, uh, gave Ryan a hug. It's like, uh, okay. Do you um, know what's funny? So um, I couldn't get in the house at first. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I was looking for the key. I, was, uh -huh. I must have been standing at the front door for like a minute yeah. or something uh -huh. before you guys let me I in. I was on the other side of the door because we, we heard the knock. I thought I was on, in the wrong location. And then we took, um, quickly after, we took this selfie. Uh -huh. I just look like my hand placement is super awkward, dude. I was like, I didn't know where to put my hand. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. you took it so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyway, it's it's really cool to meet in person, uh -huh. David, man. It's it's uh, It's been a blast. And uh, now you can testify. I'm no longer AI. I don't know, fake. man. AI technology is getting no, real good these no, days. We got to put that room at a rest. It's over now. We crushed I don't know. it. Uh, I'm only 99% sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll never be 100% sure. You'll never be 100% right. sure. <laughs> uh, let's get to some takes. This is the spice from Vitalik Buterin laying it down on the theme of, of actually staking mm -hmm. and some staking centralization here. What's this about? Yeah, this is uh, uh, in conversations of Lido getting a ton of liquid stake shares. So the, because the ST ETH pair uh, out of Lido, where you put your ETH, you get ST ETH back, it's dominating the market and there's centralization concerns around Lido. Uh, and so Vitalik says, speculative, controversial take. We should legitimize price, gou price gouging by top stake pool providers. Like for example, if a stake pool controls greater than 15 percent of total ETH stake, it should be accepted and even expected for the pool to keep increasing its fee rate until it goes back down below 15%, which actually just makes sense. So if you are something, if you are a staking provider and you're monopolizing all of the ETH stake, yeah. start jacking up the fees because you have the monopoly and make those fees go up. Also, that will incentivize a wider distribution of, of ETH across the staking ecosystem to balance that thing out. So you actually, it's bullish for the DAO when stake supply goes up, but then you get to turn on fees and you get to turn on more fees as the centralization goes up to discourage centralization but also you get to capitalize on on your power so it's like a nice balance yeah it is it's a good so what's interesting to me and i think we're gonna do we should do a lot more content on this mm -hmm. like there's mm -hmm. there's honestly there's no rush because i don't think think like I, you describe it as like when withdrawals are enabled post merge mm -hmm. and again post merge and then another hard forks so it's going to take some time it's going to be like a giant snow globe totally. right everything's going to reset totally. we're, we don't really know what the market share of these uh, staking services and you know self-staking um, what that breakdown is going to be until we mm -hmm. shake that that snow globe. But what what Vitalik is talking about here is some decentralization on the layer zero, mm -hmm. on the social layer. Right. He's saying let's make it socially a thing right. that staking providers do. They commit to socially if their market share exceeds say 15%, right. that they'll start to gradually increase fees. Right. Mm -hmm. And that would be sort of a social good. It's unclear whether that's uh, a profit maximal maximalizing right. take, right? Like, so right. I would assume the profit maximalist 
if you're a staking provider is I want to own the market. I want to be the monopoly in the market, but it's not a bad mechanism. And it does call like raise the fact that some of our decentralized protections in crypto will actually always be on the social layer, right? right? Like totally. here's another example of this. We tell you every week, go bankless, mm -hmm. take custody of your own keys. We're, we're doing that. We're communicating mm -hmm. that on the social layer. Client diversity. Client yeah. diversity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's run your own node if you can, if you have those capabilities. Um, that's, how we keep, that's how we keep the system decentralized mm -hmm. too, is on the social layer. And I think the, uh, the staking wars, Ryan, are definitely coming. We had yeah. uh, the Coinbase uh, 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 release of their staking as a service protocol for institutions. Right now we got Lido and Rocketpool and StakeWise live. So these are the three. We just had the, the Coinbase announcement go live as well. We have Obel Network coming. We have Swell coming. Uh, the ETH staking wars are going to be hot. They're going to be hot. going to be hot. We're going to be talking about it a lot. And of course, I think people want insight in terms of where they should stake, right? It's mm -hmm. still a little bit risky. We're, we're pre-merged uh, yeah. to stake right now. I don't know. How, do, you, do you stake? You, you stake. You know, oh, stake. Of course. Yeah, I stake. I, I, I stake, bro. I stake. David stakes. Uh, what's this next tweet? Leading into Matt Huang from Paradigm. He says, the most important long-term fundamental ind indicator for crypto slash Web3 is the quality of talent inflows. We've talked about this a few times so far on this podcast. Not only are the inflows still strong despite a jittery market, but they appear to be accelerating as many Web2 stock packages are down 50 to 80%. Ooh. Oof, Ooh. oof. Uh, the great migration of 2022, uh, just really leaning into this meme of as crypto goes down in prices, talent goes up in supply. Uh, it's true. That's yeah. what you've seen. And that's another, that was also reflected in the A16Z report mm -hmm. uh, from Chris Dixon as Should well. Should we go it's back really and read our jobs list? <laughs> oh my God. No, just like skip back. If you're listening, guys, just skip go back. back. Go, okay, here's go, go back to the page where you listen to the jobs and then we'll resume here. Get a job in crypto. Get a job. Uh, here's a here's some guy, uh, Ryan Sean Adams tweet build the dip. Yeah, that's a new take. Yeah, I tweeted that out in the audience while you were giving your demo, David. <laughs> <laughs> you were on just, Twitter while I was on stage. No, just like you know, sometimes ideas come to me. Like mm -hmm. you inspired it. Oh, How about that? Yeah, thank and you. And I was like, look thank at you. all these things we're building. This is Web three social. Like for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, we're actually seeing products that I feel like could achieve product market fit and transaction. And that's the message. Remember last last cycle, 2017. There's this whole meme of of buy the dip, buy the dip. Cool. Buying the dip is cool. But you know what we're here to do? Build the dip. Mm -hmm. Okay? Build through the dip. And that's honestly what I'm seeing at this conference. What I'm seeing in, in uh, the crypto community right now is this resolve, right? So people are bearish prices. Right. Like everyone thinks, everyone here thinks we are headed into a bear market. But you know what? Mm -hmm. They're all resolved to build through this. Absolutely. Like there is comp there's so much confidence that we're going to come out on the other side even stronger that mm -hmm. this industry is here to stay and that like the things we build during this uh this i don't know year period two yep. year period mm -hmm. two month period who knows during this brief this period of time brief in the in the whole trajectory of crypto this will be an epic opportunity for builders mm -hmm. and also for buyers but let's build the dip right. man i think if you zoom out in crypto we're actually not well it's always time frames are always uh, an issue, but yeah. we're really in a 12 year bull market. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so like the bull market hasn't ended. It's just a dip. Uh, and I'll just reiterate this because uh, I said it a couple weeks ago, but like I'm sure a lot of people probably have exhausted all of their money because they aggressively bought the dip maybe too soon. I don't know. Either way, you're going to run out of money to buy the dip. Yeah. And so how do you gain more exposure to crypto? Yeah. Uh, here, what I did in 2018 is I uh, started like built a podcast, POV Crypto, my first podcast, turned that into a company with Bankless uh, and that turned my social network into a crypto social network, just leveraged every form of capital that I had into the crypto world. Uh, and it's best done in bear markets. Some people might say you're overexposed, David. I don't Are you think I'm, I'm, I'm trying every I'm looking under all couch cushions, trying to find different ways to leverage myself up on crypto this without man, actually taking this leverage. This man last Friday was selling his furniture on <laughs> <laughs> on a bankless live stream. And I if you speculate, need patio furniture in San Diego, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> I expect those proceeds went into buying ETH, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure, but I expect it. What are you excited about, man? Oh my gosh, there's so much to be excited about. Uh, like all the things that just got launched and announced at Permissionless are new toys I want to play with. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for you to become a conferencer. I think you got conference pilled, oh, Ryan. Oh God. Uh, it's, there, it's extremely exhausting. I mean, I don't know how I have this much energy right now. I feel yeah. like I could go to bed. Uh, but like there's conferences ahead are absolutely insane. We got ECC in France. Uh, we got uh, DevCon in Colombia coming up. Ryan, am I going to see you at any of those? 
Oh, wow. No commitments, okay? Because this is recorded. No commitments. Mm -hmm. But I, I will say, uh, do you want to ask me what I'm excited about? What are you excited about, Ryan? It's crypto conferences. <laughs> 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 Look, man, I'm excited about the crypto community. The mm. energy here is palatable, right? Like, oh, yes. you, you look around here, and uh, the, the bear market is fiction. Right. Back to what we said. It's numbers on a screen. Right. Who cares? There is no bear market here, and the community has so much energy. Uh, the bankless community in particular oh my gosh, dude. showed up to this yes. conference. I don't know if it's a third, half of it all attendees. It feels like half of the attendees are bankless fam. Yeah. And um, like people that I know their Discord handles, right. you meet them in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's funny. So when, what David and I do, right, obviously, uh, there's a lot of social media chatter. Right. And one thing that I was telling David is what I see often is is kind of the negative comments, right? right? Like right. go scan any YouTube comment on right. Bankless <laughs> and there's bound to be somebody who'd be like, these guys are shillers. People are, people are writing nasty comments as we speak. Just Ryan. <laughs> shit talking us right now. And like. You, you just hear that, right? Well, it's mm -hmm. like, and but the people in real life, these are the people that are building. These are the settlers, mm -hmm. not the tourists. Right. These are not the trolls. It's just a tremendous amount of energy. And uh, it's really cool to see um, the impact right. that the bankless movement has right. had. Because yeah. I'll just say it again, and we've said it before, but bankless is not a podcast. It's not a newsletter. Bankless is a social movement. And the end goal of that movement is freedom, mm -hmm. okay? Wealth is also a path towards freedom, and it's all connected mm -hmm. here. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm just seeing a lot of a lot of gratitude, a lot mm -hmm. of grateful people, totally. a lot of people excited, even right. in the bear market, to be on this journey. Right. The the frogs don't come to the conferences, Ryan. <laughs> and it's very very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all of the different parts of like the bankless uh, organization, the bankless community. Uh, the the Dow punks were out in force. Uh, the Dow punk jerks are so identifiable. Uh, yeah. So nice job with that, Sinjin and the bankless Dow. Uh, bankless Academy also had their own shirts what? and their own branding. Bankless, bankless Consulting is getting like the most amount of rep I've seen out of the the whole. It was it's absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, and just like all, all the bankless swag apparel is like very easy to identify and very. It's, I love it when I see those shirts. Uh, so, like, shout out to the Bankless community. This has been awesome to meet you all, you guys. If you don't know what Bankless Academy or Bankless Consulting is, it's cool because neither did we, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is like the, the Bankless DAO is self organizing right. and creating all sorts of paths for people to get jobs in Web3 and mm -hmm. launch careers. It's just incredible. And uh, I'm super excited about it. Man, uh, David, I think we've got some footage yeah. at the end of this yeah. of us meeting. But first, we're gonna go all like you know. We got it. We got a slideshow. Mom show. on you. Here's this. And we're here's, gonna show you some albums. Here's here's this a quick photo. Here's here's our Airbnb. Bankless fam in the Airbnb for the first time. So that's <laughs> that's pretty crazy. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, what is this? Oh yeah, this is uh, when we met on stage. Fake met on stage the next day. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is at the the Bankless DAO event. So these are all DAO members. That's Perchy right there. Uh, let's see what else. What else do we got? It, the, <laughs> It was a great. It was a great event. It was yeah, a great event. Tons of pictures, uh, guys. Mm -hmm. it, it felt like talking to family. Also, some of our previous podcast guests were there. Got right. to meet Josh Rosenthal in person, and he dropped a fire presentation on the crypto renaissance. Mm -hmm. I sadly had to miss that one, uh, but uh, I'm definitely going to go as soon as I'm back home. Hopefully, I can watch it on the plane, uh, but it's on the YouTube, so I'm going to go back and watch that on the Guys, YouTube. Guys, we will find you a link. Somebody's got to find you a link mm -hmm. to this. So if you like their crypto renaissance episode, this was that plus more. Mm -hmm. Like. Josh put in all sorts of teasers for the bankless community and extras. Yeah. We also got to meet Justin Drake. Uh, so inspired by Michael Wong, we did the weird uh, cross handshake. Uh, <laughs> so, so there's that. Uh, let's see. This is also our, our first uh, picture with a, a fan. Uh, so part of the bankless DAO. Also the very rare white t-shirt as well. All right, this is you with Chris Dixon on stage talking about uh, the state of crypto in 2022. How was that? That was, that was a pretty cool, surreal experience doing uh, Chris, uh, Chris Dixon in Chris real Dixon life. Chris Dixon is phenomenal. He's also super tall, guys. Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, He's just a very, yeah. dude, very dude, playing the hype game of like how tall are people is is, is always a fun game at, at, at yeah. real life conferences. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I got green pilled by Kevin Owaki, uh, and so Kevin Owaki's hand, he's handing out green pills. They're just green Tic Tacs, uh, but he's turning it into a meme. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, there there was the uh, this DeFi State of the Union with Stani Kulichev, uh, Mary from Uniswap, Kane, and uh, and also Robert Leshner. Uh, and then the last but not least, uh, this is uh, oh my God. There's so many people here. We got people from the Tracer Dow fam. We got Mariano Conti. We got Joshua and John from Opolis. Uh, there's Ryan Selkis in the back. Uh, he's, oh he's my in, God, he's Ryan 
Tall this is definitely too. in Tall Dow for yeah, sure. Tall Dow. Uh, yeah, this was at, at the Bankless party. And so uh, thank, for, thank you for everyone who showed up. I had a ton of fun. Yeah, so notice, guys, what uh, David is doing here is he's trying to get you conference FOMO to get yeah. you to come in person. That's what he did on me, but it was totally worth it. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What a fantastic event this was. We hope to see you at the next one. No news yet, but I think there's going to be something bigger, better oh, next yeah. year. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, of course, over the year to come. Uh, uh, coin desk consensus co coming for you guys. Uh, ooh, ooh, <laughs> spicy. Uh, anything else, man, or should we close this out? I think we should close this out. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the very first weekly roll up in person. I think we had a different, like a cool dynamic here. Uh, uh -huh. It's like a quicker response time. You know, it's better than dealing with a deep fake. I'm sorry, you have to do that every week, David. <laughs> AI is uh, learning, folks. Guys, there will be a clip of the moment we met. Super cool. I haven't watched it yet. You guys will get an opportunity to do this. But of course, got to end with this. As we always do, crypto is risky. ETH is risky. You could lose what you put in, but we are headed west. This is the frontier, but we're glad you're with us on the bankless journey. Thanks a lot. Ironically, uh, we are actually pretty far east right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Bankless HQ? Is this where Bankless lives? How you doing, man? God damn. How's it going? Good, good, good. Welcome. I'm real. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, head over to Bankless HQ right now to develop your crypto investing skills and learn how to free yourself from banks and gain your financial independence. We recommend joining our daily newsletter, podcast, and community as a Bankless Premium subscriber to get the most out of your Bankless experience. You'll get access to our market analysis, our alpha leaks, and exclusive content, and even the Bankless token for airdrops, raffles, and unlocks. If you're interested in crypto, the Bankless community is where you want to be. Click the link in the description to become a Bankless Premium subscriber today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for in-depth interviews with industry leaders, Ask Me Anythings, and weekly roll-ups where we summarize the week in crypto and other fantastic content. Thanks everyone for watching and being on the journey as we build out the Bankless Nation.